Welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering. Uh, we were discussing about basics of talent in the last lecture. In this lecture under module 6, we will be discussing about design of talent for genome engineering, uh, where uh, we use some of the concepts we have learned in the last lecture for the design of talent. This is a simple overview of uh, different tail nucleus architectures and uh, some of these are already known to you. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed how the tail domains uh, can be fused with various functional proteins and uh, we can thereby design synthetic protein molecules having DNA specificities to carry out uh, diverse functions. So, this is just to briefly show you about uh, some of those capabilities once more. So, whereby we can create various uh, tail nucleases and as well as uh, nickages uh, by uh, fusing certain functionalities to the C terminus of the uh, tail uh, proteins. So, to obtain all those uh, diverse functionalities, uh, various scientists have developed numerous tail fusion proteins over the time. Uh, since the first uh, discovery of the role of tail in infection in plants uh, by Gentomenus and the discovery of the principles by which the tail recognizes uh, DNA sequences, many developments have been done in this regard of engineering tails into functional uh, proteins uh, which are uh, uh, nucleases as well as uh, uh, DNA modifying uh, functions. So, let us start with uh, some of the uh, sus uh, functionalities. For example, uh, just one year after the discovery of the role of tail uh, in infection by uh, plants, uh, in, in, in by gentomenus in plants uh, in 2011. Uh, the development of detail took place and immediately next year two more technologies flash and ICA was developed as well as in 2013 uh, do it yourself protocol uh, was developed whereby uh, uh, the laboratories can develop these tail fusion proteins uh, on their own. And in 2016 there was the development of star and just recently uh, the development of DCTA. Uh, besides these uh, uh, platforms, there are numerous other platforms which has not been included here. We will be discussing only a few of these in today's lecture uh, due to the paucity of time. So, let us start with the first uh, technology, uh, the designer tail or detail. So, this was developed by Weber and associates uh, and uh, it was an easy method uh, which can be used for tailoring detailed proteins uh, for a specific uh, DNA sequence. So, through to successive one pot golden gate cloning reactions, they assembled constructs for tail proteins containing a 19 base DNA binding domain having 17 engineered full repeats and then repeat 0 and a half repeat 17.5. Uh, so, 17, 18 and total uh, 19 uh, repeats and initially they prepared a set of 68 repeat modules that allow construction of DNA binding domains for any 17 base user defi defined uh, target sequences. They included the native half repeat of 17.5 uh, of uh, AVR BS3 which contains a RVD specific for thymidin uh, in the C terminal fragment of the final assembly uh, vector. So, uh, let us see this uh, figure A a uh, little bit uh, uh, closely. So, uh, here uh, only two modules R1 and R2 are shown here, but we can go for many modules at, at the same time. This FS represents uh, fusion sites. Okay. So, these concepts are very, very important in understanding uh, the development of this uh, technology platform. So, 
plasmids encoding selected repeat modules R1 and R2 were mixed in one tube uh, together with uh, BSA1 T4 DNA ligase and destination vector containing a leg Z fragment for blue white selection. So, this is a one pot reaction everything is put together into a single uh, reaction vessel. So, since uh, these endonuclease BSA uh, one sites are there the BSA will cleave it and the T4 DNA which is present in the reaction vessel it will uh, ligate the cut uh, DNA and uh, this will be ligated into a uh, destination vector which contains a leg Z fragment that helps uh, in, in the uh, selection. So, here we are just showing the example of two modules getting assembled and um, uh, this assembly of the R1 and R2 using BSA1 and ligase gives rise to a plasmid uh, lacking the initial uh, BSA sites. Uh, but containing a block of assembled repeats flanked by two uh, BPI1 site. The two BPI1 site allows release of the assembled repeats as one block for the second step step of uh, cloning. So, if you can see over here uh, due to the BSA1 uh, uh, restriction uh, digestion. So, there is a cut over here and there is also a cut over here and uh, this part is eliminated. Uh, from the uh, inclusion uh, in the uh, vector desti destination uh, vector uh, destination uh, vector finally. Now, uh, here you can see the structure of uh, AVR uh, BS3 uh, which contains a central region with uh, 17 direct repeats these are the gray boxes flanked by a thymidin specific uh, repeat uh, which is uh, repeat 0 and a half repeat which is repeat 17.5 both flanking repeats shown as dark gray boxes. Then there are uh, two nuclear localization uh, sequences and a transcription activation domain about which we discussed uh, yesterday located in the C terminal region. Then one representative uh, 34 amino acid a repeat uh, is uh, shown here with the uh, RVD of the NI type uh, which is highlighted in grey and uh, this is the uh, uh, codon uh, binding uh, preferences or base preferences uh, as you can uh, see over here. So, uh, a set of uh, 68 uh, repeat modules with uh, 4 modules with different specificity for each of the 17 uh, repeat uh, positions uh, were uh, generated. These repeat modules are flanked by two BSA1 sites with fusion sites selected from the codon optimized sequence of AVBR BS3. And for more information, you can visit uh, these uh, publication. The selected repeat modules are pre assembled via. BSA1 into pre assembly vectors that we uh, discussed just recently. Uh, recently. So, these are the selected modules and then they are getting uh, pre assembled here and you can see here the uh, BPI1 site and BSA1 site and on, on flanking both the regions and this is the uh, lag Z. Uh, okay. So, uh, this is the pre assembly vector uh, PL1 uh, TA1 and we also use PL1 TA2, PL1 uh, TA3. So, we uh, add BSA1 plus ligase into, uh, ligase into the reaction vessel as we have told and as a uh, result of this uh, putting all these together into one uh, single uh, reaction vessel uh, we have these uh, uh, repeat modules cloned uh, into the destination vector and here you can see there is no any presence of BSA1 uh, sequence uh, anymore. So, the pre assembled repeat blocks are then combined in the final destination vector uh, PL2 uh, TA uh, using a second BPI1 based golden cloning uh, reaction. So, we uh, do the pre assembly into the uh, PL1 
uh, one vectors initially and then we put all these together and for the final detail assembly uh, and then this is in this step we also using this uh, uh, endonuclease uh, BPI1 and ligase here we use BSA1 and ligase in the first reaction and then this finally will give us the vector which is loaded uh, with the tail uh, protein molecule sequences. What is the advantage uh, of uh, this method? Uh, with this method it is possible to make half repeat modules with different RVD types to improve the binding of detail proteins for target sequences that do not have a T at the C terminus. In case 17 repeats are not sufficient to provide specific binding, detail proteins with additional repeat could easily be uh, constructed. So, we can add more and more uh, of the repeat modules. The Golgate, golden gate cloning method allows directional and seamless assembly of multiple uh, DNA fragments and thus provide a perfect fit for detailed protein engineering. The method is sequence independent. The method allows assembly of repeats with identical or highly homologous sequences since only the four base pair fusion sites at the end of the repeats have to be unique. Selection of fusion sites with unique sequences at the ends of successive repeats can be easily accomplished by either changing the colonuses of the ends of the repeats or by shifting the fusion sites a few nucleotides at the ends of the various repeats. Overall the method is simple and uh, economical as claimed uh, by the developers. Over time uh, in around 2012 as I have already told two more technologies were developed. One is the FLASH which stands for fast ligation based automatable solid phase high throughput and the uh, third one is the uh, iterative uh, capped uh, assembly. So, uh, in the FLASH assembly it has been reported that it, uh, it enables high throughput uh, uh, genome uh, editing. So, uh, they uh, describe the first uh, ligation based automobile solid uh, high throughput platform as a rapid and cost effective method uh, which uh, was used to develop large scale assembly of talents. And with uh, this technology uh, they tested 48 uh, flash assembled talent pairs uh, in a human cell based EGFP reporter system and found that all 48 possessed efficient gene modification activities and uh, they further used uh, uh, these flash to assemble talents for uh, 96 endogenous human genes uh, implicated in cancer and or epigenetic uh, regulation and found that 84 pairs were able to efficiently introduce targeted alterations. Uh, we claim that this method is robust and uh, uh, it facilitates high throughput genome editing uh, uh, at a scale uh, of at that time which was not possible with uh, other technologies like gene finger nucleases and mega nucleases. In this course we are not uh, discussing much about uh, mega nucleases because it has become a little bit uh, obsolete uh, technology. But we are uh, of course referencing to it uh, in, in certain cases wherever uh, required. The other technology uh, developed by uh, Briggs uh, and his co-workers uh, is the ICA or iterative kept assembly. Uh, uh, the, it is also claimed to be very rapid and scalable and uh, ICA uh, as the name uh, suggests uh, uh, it is a rapid assembly of repeat module uh, DNA by sequential ligation of monomers on a solid support. So, so they will be using a solid support and onto this solid support they will be sequentially ligating the repeat uh, modules. And while doing so they do uh, capping of the oligonucleotides to increase the frequency of uh, full length products and they use a hairpin capping uh, oligonucleotides to block incompletely extended chains generated during the process by imperfect monomer ligation efficiency 
uh, greatly increasing the frequency of full length final products. Besides being fast, ICA is also claimed to be efficient and scalable method of producing repetitive modular DNA of uh, defined uh, sequences. Next, uh, let us discuss about one uh, simple technology for uh, talon or tail based uh, protein assembly. Uh, it is simply called as do it yourself uh, protocol. Uh, which was uh, developed by uh, uh, Bayalu and his uh, associates uh, Udia Stone. So, this uh, technology uh, uh, relies on a simple design of tails and coupled with high binding predictability and specificity. And uh, the simple technology uh, can be easily used by any standard uh, molecular biology uh, laboratory with only uh, the uh, limited uh, resources. Uh, so, uh, custom tail uh, assembly at that time was costly and it was uh, only available to few research centers. So, this do it yourself uh, approach helped break this kind of uh, uh, solve this kind of problems and uh, make uh, talent assembly. A, a, a very simple method which can be done in any laboratory with uh, minimum uh, 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 instrumental uh, setup. So, this is a schematic, uh, uh, schematic overview of uh, multimer assembly. So, you have uh, say for example, here 3 multimer, so 1 to 3 uh, uh, from the ready made monomer library into a vector of soy. So, uh, this is the vector of soys. So, in certain first cases, we are interested to make a nucleus or talent. So, we here we are attaching it to uh, fork one. In the second case, we want to attach these uh, tail modules to uh, transcription factors for gene activation. So, it uh, and, and there are many other uh, such functionalities uh, which can be added uh, by these uh, simple uh, do it yourself uh, method. So, let us see how uh, we can uh, uh, proceed uh, in this uh, particular uh, method. So, this is the workflow uh, of this do it yourself uh, assembly uh, comprising of 2 days and you can see the time taken for each step uh, on, on the, on the, on the uh, right side. Okay. Uh, so, first step is uh, choosing the monomers and then after the monomers are chosen, uh, we go for the multiple assembly and then uh, there is exonucleus uh, treatment and the fourth step is the multimer amplification. And with this the first day uh, work is all over. So, next day we start with electrophoresis and gel purification of the multimers and these multimers we assemble into our uh, targeted vector and then uh, once that is done, we go for transformation. So, uh, the first step is assembling monomers into uh, or multimers. Okay. So, from uh, monomer to multimer, what is the uh, procedure? So, you can see here uh, in figure A and B, uh, we are trying to uh, show you uh, this uh, process. And this process is based on uh, use of restriction, uh, ligation, and uh, amplification. So, multimer 1 and 2 are designed to be uh, hexamers. Uh, for example, here this is hexamer and the length of multimer 3 can vary to allow variations in the uh, final uh, length. Uh, so, here uh, it is being taken as a uh, tetramer. To remove the incompletely assembled and near ligation uh, products, DNA exonucleus treatment is carried out after the multimer assembly. The correctly assembled circular multimers are subsequently amplified by uh, PCR and then uh, this it is used for E. coli transformation uh, in a vector of choice. Uh, typically, it would result in tens of tens of hundreds of colonies and uh, the negative controls would have a significantly low lower or uh, uh, no colonies. 
then uh, we go for uh, assessing uh, uh, the correctness of the assembly uh, we go for a colony piece here we pick up the colony one by one and then we go for a colony piece here uh, this is a uh, quality uh, assurance step so uh, the correct assembly of these multimers into the vectors are assessed by the colony piece here uh, in one instance and also it is confirmed by uh, sequencing uh, in, in, in another instance and uh, you can see in figure F as the tail bending specificity is based on four types of RVDs color coding the RVD and coding nucleotides can quickly reveal the correct order uh, of the uh, tandem uh, repeats. So, for functional validation uh, this is the validation only at the uh, cloning level that the multiband assembly is uh, proper. So, we do the PCR as well as the sequencing. Now, for functional validation of these uh, tail constructs a custom tail domain uh, uh, assemble uh, into the EF1 uh, tail uh, TF uh, vector. So, this is the EF1 a, a TF vector and uh, a dual reporter construct was uh, generated carrying three copies of the tail binding uh, sequences. Okay, so, this is, these are the tail binding sequences in, in triplets. Then we go for core transfection of these uh, custom tail TF and the uh, dual reporter construct into HEK293 cells which showed strong induction of uh, Luciferase uh, activity confirming the tail uh, transcription uh, function uh, functionality. So, if you look into the mock or the control there is no any Luciferase activity, but uh, in the transfected one uh, you have these Luciferase activity which is around uh, 65 uh, fold high. So, this confirms that the system is uh, working fine. To sum up in this uh, procedure uh, uh, they streamlined the golden gigabit based method for custom tail assembly by providing ready made quality controlled monomers. They eliminated the procedure for error prone and time consuming setup. Uh, using four thermocycling reactions they optimize the protocol towards a fast two day assembly of custom tails and they increase the versatility for diverse downstream applications by providing series of vector sets to generate both talents and uh, tail transcription factors under the control of uh, different promoters. They validated the system by assembling a number of talents and tail transcription factors with DNA sequencing and demonstrated that an assembled tail transcription factor was able to transactivate a luciferase a reporter gene and a talent pair was able to cut at its uh, targets. Let us now discuss about the uh, fifth uh, uh, technology the STAR uh, assembly method. A STAR stands for a simple tal effector assembly uh, reaction and this uses isothermal uh, assembly. And this was developed by Gogolok uh, and his uh, associates. So, before we uh, go into the details of this simple tal effector assembly reaction, uh, let us uh, try to learn about the Gibson assembly uh, which we have uh, referred to uh, in, in the past in one of uh, one or few of the uh, assembly methods as well. So, this paper published by uh, Zipshin and his uh, team uh, is about a method and geometric assembly of DNA molecules up to several hundred a kilo basis. So, uh, we can have small small DNA fragments and then uh, or we can concatenate all these uh, small DNA fragments into very large uh, DNA uh, fragments. So, it is believed that we can even go for constructing large chromosomes by this enzymatic assembly of the uh, DNA molecules. Uh, Gibson assembly is an isothermal single reaction method for assembling multiple overlapping DNA molecules by the concerted action of a 5 prime exonuclease number 1 a DNA polymerase number 2 and a DNA ligase. So, 3 uh, enzymes are involved in this uh, reaction. Uh, the first one is the 5 prime exonuclease and the second one is the 5 prime exonuclease. So, the first one is the 5 prime exonuclease and the second one is the 5 prime exonuclease and the second one is the 5 prime exonuclease and the second one is the
are essential for carrying out this isothermal reaction. A 5 prime exonuclease, a DNA polymerase and a DNA uh, ligase. Now, what are the advantages of the gypsum assembly? There is no need for specific restriction sites. Through this method, we can join almost any two fragments regardless of the sequences. It offers seamless uh, joining of uh, fragments. It is a facile method, I mean uh, very simple uh, with fewer steps and can combine many DNA fragments at once in one tube reaction single step. So, uh, let us see how this is being done. So, these are say two DNA fragments to be joined, the green one and the black one these are double stranded. So, now what we do to one of these we, we, we may do it to the green one uh, 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 or the uh, black one. So, here we add uh, an overlap to the black one by a PCR reaction and this overlap is uh, with the uh, green uh, species of the DNA molecule. So, this is the uh, amount of overlap and this overlap is introduced with the help of a PCR reaction. Now, we add these to the Egyptian assembly master matrix containing all the three enzymes that we discussed. Here the exonucleus will chew back the 5 prime ends okay? and then uh, these fragments will anneal uh, due to the complementary uh, at this uh, point. And once this is done, these gaps are filled up or closed by the action of DNA polymerase and then finally, these small nicks which cannot be sealed by DNA polymerase is sealed by the action of DNA ligase. So, you, re you require three enzymes here as already told to you. First one you need an 5 prime exonucleus, second you need a DNA polymerase third one is new you need a DNA ligase and these enzymes easily available and you need other enzymes uh, for example, tech polymerases uh, to carry out the uh, uh, PCR reaction. So, for carrying out gypsum assembly you need uh, these, these many things uh, uh, at least 4 enzymes and then DNTPs and so on and these are today possible to be done in any kind of simple uh, molecular biology laboratory which have a, a PCR and a simple uh, hot water bath and other uh, incubation uh, facilities. So, uh, this is just an example by which we have a seamless uh, you know connection of two DNA molecules over here. We can use these to join not only just two several such DNA molecules as shown here by some color coded fragments as a, as, a, as a kind of a uh, representation. So, technically speaking here we uh, recess, recess the DNA fragments yielding the single stranded DNA overhangs that anneal the uh, specifically and then these are joined uh, covalently and Egyptian assembly can be used to seamlessly construct synthetic and natural genes genetic pathways and entire genomes and could be a useful molecular uh, engineering tool. So, these method we are going to use in the star platform or the simple tail assembly uh, reaction. Star addresses some of the shortcomings of the existing golden gate or solid phase assembly protocols and enables routine production of tail transcription factors for diverse application in mammalian stem cells and synthetic biology. It uses an isothermal assembly, Egyptian assembly which we just discussed that is labor and cost effective accessible rapid scalable and very simple. Uh, a small 64 part fragment library is employed and the specific tail repeat sequence is generated within uh, 8 hours. Uh, sequence verified talents or tail transcription factor plasmids targeting 17 base pair target sequences can be produced within 3 days without need for stepwise intermediate plasmid production. Gogolo can associates uh, demonstrated the utility of the star 
through production of functional tail transcription factors capable of activating human SOX2 uh, expression. So, uh, this is a simple strategy to generate tunnel effectors using uh, Gibson assembly. So, uh, here you can see uh, tail repeat domains of uh, 34 amino acid each with RVD positions at 12 and uh, 13 and new sequences for the 21 base pair ends uh, uh, were designed using alternative colons that enable position uh, specific uh, assembly. Uh, 16 into 2, uh, 30, uh, 2 different uh, ends of 4 tail repeat domains were created. Its repeat position uh, has a uh, unique uh, uh, sequence and uh, this is the tail uh, domain and this is the functional domain and we can have uh, a lot of very to, uh, we need to create a lot of variations in this tail domain for which we are using this uh, strategy. So, there are various steps uh, in this uh, entire uh, process. The first step is uh, tail design uh, using the uh, 68 part uh, uh, library and then uh, step 2 is uh, tetramer assembly this is the first uh, Egyptian uh, reaction. So, here you can see uh, the first Egyptian reaction uh, taking place and the uh, second step is a plasma safe DNS cleanup reaction and the uh, uh, next reaction is the PCR amplification followed by SCH1 digest blunt and uh, generation and then uh, next step is SPR uh, I clean up uh, size selection and clean up of the uh, foamers or tetramers and uh, the full tail assembly which involves the second uh, Egyptian reaction. And finally, the last step is the bacterial uh, transformation tail, tail plasmid expression in uh, bacteria. So, in uh, B you can see the summary of uh, 8 hour assembly of tail repeats domains with star uh, uh, protocol using two separate Gibson assembly reaction uh, 4 into 1 mers and 4 into 4 mers uh, plus the uh, vector. And uh, in C we have the description of the various uh, steps. So, using these technologies uh, uh, here we have a functional domain and a tail uh, domain. So, depending on the variability of these uh, functional domain, we may have a different kind of products. This is a tail domain and this is the fusion partner or the functional domain. So, if you use endonucleus focon, uh, it is known to you, it will be talon in the way ZF fused to nucleus is ZFN. Then if we have transcriptional regulatory domains, you have, we have tail transcription factors or tail DFs. And then we may have also uh, certain functional domains uh, which modify the DNA or modify proteins. So, we may have uh, histone modifiers uh, like LSD1. So, these will be tail chromatin editors or tail Cs and these are some of the references uh, where you can find details of these kind of uh, fusion products. So, thank you uh, for your uh, patient hearing. Uh, we will be discussing more about uh, the tail design in the next part of this uh, lecture.